Hello everyone, this is Kathy from Train Up a Child Homeschooling and today I'm bringing you a flip through of the BJU Reading 2 for Grade 2. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. The This obviously, as you can see, it brings a lot of components. Um, so I understand if you, just by looking at this, you feel a little overwhelmed. Um, but, you know, as a homeschool mom, you have the liberty to add or exclude as many things as you want. And that's perfectly okay. So I'm gonna start off by showing you the teacher's manual. Just zoom in a little bit there. <clears throat> this is the teacher's manual. Here it tells you, um, it, it gives you a, like an explanation of how the manual works, the lesson features, what each portion of the lesson plan what it's for um here on this or i'm um, sorry the camera keeps moving here in this yellow box you will always have like your phonics your phonics lesson in this yellow box you have your phonics lesson and then here it will tell you exactly what you need here it'll have some vocabulary words that you should just go over before you read um, whatever story you're about to read because you may be some vocabulary vocabulary words that your student may not understand and then here it'll have some service words which are kind of like sight words okay now these are things that you will go over and it's scripted for you so it's not that as complicated as it looks like um what's on blue is what you will ask and the pink is what the answer should be everything on black is the explanation um so it's not as complicated as it looks like here just has some background information about the story that you just sh you should just read to yourself if you want to. Here it'll have the lessons and all the page pages you will be doing and things like that for the different lessons. So it doesn't uh, it's not as complicated as it looks. Um, definitely just by going over this um, teacher's guide, I already know of certain things that I'm going to be excluding. There is a lot of principles that you have to do from the CD that's in the back of the teacher's guide which is right here. Um, there's probably a lot of those that I'm not gonna be printing because it's just um, a lot of extra stuff that is just not necessary, okay? Um, here it has a reading focus. So here, this is the extra stuff that has the, that is not part of the reading. This is just extra stuff to expound and um, you know just to add more depth to what you're learning. And it's just like, uh, you know what? That's okay. I can skip that. It's not a big deal. I just want to, my main goal with this curriculum is to go over the phonics that they have here, go over the phonics, and then just do the reading and the comprehension. That's what I want to do. Anything else, I'm probably going to end up excluding. Okay? And that's just how we're going to do it. Here's another explanation of how the lesson works here so these pages are very very helpful so if you do end up getting this curriculum i would definitely suggest going over the 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 beginning of the teacher's guide so that way you can really get a feeling of what they're all about and what you what you and just plan ahead of like okay that i don't like so much i'm gonna not do that in my lessons i don't want my lesson to take an hour definitely no okay and in these pages it tells you it's pretty much an overview of all the readers, an overview. It has the pages you'll be reading. It has the lesson number. It has the work text pages, the vocabulary words. And each color has to do with a particular reader. And I will be showing you the four different readers that come with this curriculum, okay? And then um, this is what the first lesson looks like. Here you have your phonics lesson which is very scripted, everything is there for you. You do have to print some things out from the CD. For the phonics, I will probably be printing those things out unless it's a concept that we've already covered or unless it's a concept that he's already mastered. But if not, then I would definitely probably go in the CD and print out the visuals. Here are the service words you're gonna be going over with your child just so that way that he can you know, start memorizing. I think these are um, sight words. Excuse me for the noise. My kids are just playing right outside the door. Um, here are the vocabulary words that will be introduced in the reading portion of the reader. 
and then um it also has you you see this reading focus thing mm -mm. it's cute and everything but i don't got time for that so but the reading focus has me print out story clues from the cd and then just talks about like oh which of these stories would you be most interested in reading you know um uh you know like what do you think this story will be about be just based on the title and it's just like i don't know i just i don't have time for that but so this is you know as the homeschool mom you have the liberty remember you don't serve the curriculum the curriculum serves you okay the curriculum is there to help you so then it starts the the reading portion and then um, um what i like about bju is that you begin to implement silent reading which this is something very new to me um, I mean, my daughter has been doing silent reading, but she's such a good reader. It's okay. I don't mind her doing silent reading. My my son, on the other hand, um, he's he's advanced for for reading for reading in his age, but he still needs some help. So, but it's cool that with this year we're gonna begin to implement silent and oral reading. So what BJU recommends is that you first let your students start with silent reading, and then maybe after a few pages. You can um, have them continue doing oral reading, okay? But they do highly suggest that you let them start with silent first and then go to oral and then do both or just do one um, And because silent reading will definitely help them with uh, reading comprehension and things like that. Here it has some um, comprehension questions which are in blue and the answers are in pink. And these are for, for to go along with the story as the story is being read okay but i mean if the story is being silently read i guess you're gonna have to keep it on your student to to see what page he's at but usually these questions i would save them for the end of the story um that's how i did it with my daughter when she was doing a becca reading i would save these questions for the end of the story when she was done reading then i would go i would ask her these questions but i mean it's definitely up to you it has a picture of the reader here so you can follow along. And then sometimes in this yellow box, instead of having the student read, it'll have the teacher read, okay? And when it has the teacher, you the teacher read, it'll have like a little ear icon. <clears throat> so that will let you know that you're supposed to read it aloud, those pages. So it continues and it continues and then this will be the end of the lesson. And then at the end of the lesson, there are some review questions. There are some review questions. Um, then here you say, it says, display several books with a picture on the front cover. Select students to read the titles of each book. You see that, that's, no, I'm not gonna do that. Um, and then you would re uh, review the vocabulary words again. And then there are work text pages, okay? And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Here they're doing work text pages three to four. And then here it has the answer key for the work text pages. If you would like a bigger option or like a bigger view, then they also have this work text, um, work text answer key book. Okay, That's, this, is, this will be a full size, you know, um, answer key. So I'm gonna show you what page three to four looks like. So that's what it looks like. This is where we go with lesson <clears throat> lesson two. And it's three and four. Okay. Right here. <clears throat> now BJU does use these types of visuals to explain phonics. Like this is Mrs. Short. So um, she does the, she represents the short vowel sounds. He is Mr. Short, which represents the constant and the ghost after the short vowel sound. And then this is Uncle Short. And it's just, they also have one that is like Ms. Long, which represents the long sound of the vowel. And then they have this uh, cowboy, which represents bossy R. And I don't know if I'm gonna implement those visuals or talk about these characters because I've never used them in the past. And it just, um, since I never taught phonics with them, I just feel confident enough to do it without them. Um, but that is just something to know in case that is something you're interested in, if you find that appealing. 
so this is uh, lesson three it has you reread the same story now this doesn't always happen but every so many lessons it'll have you to it'll have you rereading a story that you have already read but it doesn't always happen just fyi okay and then so it continues with the same con uh, way here are the the phonics lesson box your service sight words your new vocabulary words <clears throat> and then here sometimes these stuff right here it can be some extra stuff that you may not want to do or you may want to do um so there's definitely things i'm i'm not i'm gonna be skipping here then purpose for reading and then here these are just some like oh what is the title of the story that you will begin look at the picture do you think little bugs strip is a fantasy story so these are just questions to get the the child to really think about what the story will be about that may be something i implement because it's it's very quick it's just one two three four four questions okay and then the reading begins okay and then that's how it looks like the comprehension questions in the bottom with the questions and answers okay now a lot of these lessons you're not going to be finishing the story in one lesson some of these lessons are the stories are split up which is good because some of these stories can be very long so you're not going to be having your child sit um great to sit and read 20 pages worth of a story um so they do split up the stories which is very good i find that to be very good and then here it tells you the work text pages that you will be doing it from work text page seven to eight, which is like the worksheets that have to do with comprehension of the reading. It also has some phonics practice as well. And then here has the answers. But of course, this is very small. Um, you would definitely, I would recommend using the work text answer key. Um, or you might just be able to, you know, not need an answer key. Okay. And then I believe this is part two to the story. Okay, yeah, because you see the story we finished in part page 18. Now with lesson five, you start from page 19 and it's still the same story. So that's, it's good to know that they do split up because my son at this age, he's still not ready to be doing so much reading. Okay, this is what the word text looks like. <clears throat> I'm just going a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice has been messed up for a long time now. It gets better and then it gets messed up. Okay. Usually on the on the worksheets, we'll, you will have about two worksheets front and back to do. Or have your student do. I think this, this should be done independently, I believe, unless you see that your child needs help. But I believe these questions are pretty easy to understand especially if they've read um, the story. But I mean, definitely, I would probably be sitting with him if I see that he needs some help. I was really excited to get this curriculum because I really want us to go more in depth in our reading comprehension. And I love how this curriculum has stories for reading, com I mean, it has questions in the teacher's edition for reading comprehension. And at the same time, it also has worksheet pages that also can supplement that reading comprehension. So let's say for a particular lesson, I don't wanna ask the questions. I'll just let them do the worksheets. The worksheets will also um, implement reading comprehension. Um, so that's just something that I thought of. Maybe I can switch it around. Maybe some lessons I'll, ha I'll ask the questions, some lessons I won't or something like that. It just depends how my day is going. So some questions are some fi uh, filling the bubbles. Some questions are filling the blanks. It does have some phonics rules here as well. It will have a little explanation to the child. The main idea is what an article is mostly about. So here in the BJU is known for having little information boxes, um, usually in every worksheet that explains to the child what they're supposed to be doing as a reminder. See a title, gives a clue of what the story will be about. And then he has questions here about the title of a book. So I really like that because that can aid in independent work. 
and I believe they did that because GJU is mainly geared to um, a traditional school setting. So I believe they did that to aid the teacher, to help the teacher. So that way the, the teacher doesn't always have to answer constantly what they're supposed to be doing. They can look at that information box and understand what, what new uh, concept they're learning about for that particular lesson. It is a Christian curriculum. If you didn't know that, Hope for a Sinful World talks of here about Adam and Eve. It does implement scripture. It does talk about God. Many of the stories in the readers are Bible accounts. See, he's carrying a Bible here, which is one of the reasons why I decided to go along with this. I was going to go with all about reading level three initially because that's what I've been using with my son. And we did level one, we did level two. He did amazing with it. I love all about reading. But as they get older and I want more reading comprehension, I want something that um, we're not just learning about reading, but we also want to learn about reading comprehension. And I feel like this program is very good at doing both. And not only that, it's also Christian, which I really wanted to get um, some Christian literature implemented in our schooling. I wanted to get some more uh, literature that was that had taught good morals. And all of our reading is a secular curriculum, so they're not. Their focus is not to teach good morals or Christian living at all. So, I'm not saying their stories were in any, any way. Um, you know harmful to the child but i believe that i want something that it's not just going to be a cute story or a funny story but i want a story that's going to teach my child morals that there's going to be something that he can take from it you know like a spiritual understanding of it you know that he can apply to his life so like i said there will usually be a front and back worksheet to do during every lesson Okay, so that's the student work text. Um, the teacher's edition does come with a part two. Okay, so the first, the part one of the teacher's edition is the first two readers. And then the part two of the teacher's edition covers the next two readers. And I will be showing them to you now. But this is pretty much the same thing. Here we have a Bible story. Um, looks about like a Pharisee there. God's promised son brings hope. So here you have your phonics um, lesson, which is definitely one of the things that we'll definitely be covering. You have your um, service words, like some common, commonly used words, but that may be a little harder for the, the, um, the student to like sound out and to uh, really read it correctly vocabulary words and review words as well they implement review vocabulary words every now and then you know of, re of words that you've already talked about in the past and then here we go the bible story with the questions and everything so it's pretty much the same thing as the oops part one all righty so now i'm going to show you the readers which is usually the highlight right of any reading curriculum is the beautiful beautiful readers here we have this will be the very first one so this is 2a this will be the first reader they will be covering <clears throat> here in the beginning you have your contents page contents you see we have adam and eve here we have some story clues this is something the child would read to themselves um, it explains what a, what a title is. It explains, talks about a picture. What can we learn by just looking at the picture? This is something you can also just go over with your child. And then it goes right into the story. And then at the end of the story, there's always like comprehension questions right here, which I believe are also in the teacher's guide. And then you have the vocabulary words, the same ones you're going to be talking over with your child. Okay. And then here we have a look again. This is when they have you reread the story again. And then you're supposed to do do this um, when you do the um, look again. You're supposed to do this when you reread the story. Okay, so this is like a little intro to the next story. They're going to be reading Little Bug's Trip. And it talks about the characters of the story. It also explains that this is a fantasy story. So it gets your student to start to learn about fantasy, fiction, nonfiction, historical 
um, you know, things like that. And then he has the comprehension questions, the vocabulary words. And then sometimes it'll have a little writing prompt for them to do. And it's, it's on work test page 13. And then look again is when they have them reread the story again, which will happen in a different lesson, which would be the next day. Reading for information. Now this is an informational book as it says here. So this is not a regular story, but an informational book, which is something they would probably find in a library or maybe in their science curriculum. So that's pretty cool that they, they have so much variety here. Okay, now let me just skip more through it. This will be like a type of play. Look, act four. This is kind of like a playwright. So isn't that cool how it just introduces these things to the kids? I have read um, somewhere in the teacher's guide that you could even use the playwrights that are here to actually act it out in class. Have several students act it out or several of your kids act it out. This is reading to B. This will be the second reader. These are what they will be reading. I just love the illustrations too. This one talks about characters. And then it goes into the story. This seems like a native Indian story. The fire keeper. When did it happen? The setting of a story. Realistic fiction. So realistic fiction is really cool because it gets to teach the kids that there's some stories that do sound very realistic, but they never actually happen, but they could possibly happen. Oh my goodness, look at these illustrations. They're so cute. Look at those cute little mouse. I'm still a sucker. They also have some Amelia Vidalia here, whoever is an Amelia Vidalia fan. There's some Amelia Bedelia here as well. There's biographies here as well. Look, Annie Sullivan. This is a biography. And look, it even has Braille. Like, it's just so much variety. It is, it's exposing your child to so much types of literature that they will encounter as adults. And it's just, you know, you can't get bored. And that's why I also uh, geared more towards this curriculum because there's just a lot more variety in the readers than in All About Reading. Um, you know, there's biographies, there's, look at this, the pilgrims, there's uh, Bible stories, there's fiction, historical fiction, fantasy. There's just so much. Look, Herod, we're talking about another Bible story here. This will be the third reader, memory, um, sorry, memories to keep, reading to see. Okay, look here, it seems like we have another biography here. Billy Sunday, historical fiction. It says, in this story, the information about Billy Sunday is true. The part of the story that is about Anne and her father is fiction. Okay, so it's like a, it's like a book that is mixed with nonfiction and fiction. The farmer and the donkey. Oh, look at this. What is this about? About a war or something? Hill of Fire, historical fiction. This must be a classic book. And look, the Wright brothers is here, the ones that invented the airplane. All right, and finally, reader. 2D, this will be the final reader. There's a boy praying. Read as a play. Look at that. I'm sorry, my kids are being so loud right now. I mean, is that normal for you guys too? Please comment below if, if your life is like that too at home. Because sometimes I feel like I'm the... It's only here in my house that this happens. Let me sing Francis... Havergal, a lot of these um, people I've never even heard of, but I'm going to learn about them along with my child. 
All right, so those were the readers. Now I'm going to show you the chapter books. These chapter books are not implemented into the lesson itself. These are just books that you will do with your child whenever you feel like they're ready to do them. Maybe it could be during the winter break. Maybe it could be during the summer or something like that. They're not super long, okay? They're not like a super chunky chapter book. They don't have many pictures. They may have a few here and there. These are from BJU Press. So these were written by BJU Press, I believe, or maybe I'm wrong. Because I know that BJU Press sells books as well. I don't know if these are from me that from them or not now. Um, I do not know if there's one that's more advanced than the other. Um, according to the curriculum, they're both um, appropriate with the second grade level of reading. So that's what it said. And then these book links go along with the reader. So this will be something that you can pull up maybe during your winter break when you don't have nothing else going on, maybe during summer. Um, uh, you can, it tells you exactly what your student will know or what he will learn. It tells you what you need to gather, a copy of the chapter book, a, co a Bible and things like that. Here it has like an introduction to the story. Here it has um, like some questions. How many characters are introduced in these pages? How are they related to each other? So some questions for comprehension. And then you will have them read silently pages one through five. So it's not, it's not expected of them to read the whole chapter book in one sitting. Every lesson, they will be reading a few pages from the chapter book. Then it has some questions. It'll tell you here if it's literal or critical thinking questions. So that's pretty cool. Um, then here it continues with the questions. Um, here it has a scriptural application. I love that. So after you're done reading, you get to go into the Bible and read a specific um, verse from the Bible and think about how this verse can apply to the reading. Here it says, ask the students to think about what kind of attitude they display when they are asked to help around the house. And I'm pretty sure that has to do with the story. And then it'll ha have you read Ecclesiastes 9.10. Ask the student what this verse teaches about work. So that's pretty cool. I love that. I love that. I love how it just in incorporates the Bible so much. There's, we connect whatever we're doing. We can connect it to scripture. And, and then it continues. Read pages 6 to 13. And then a scriptural connection. So that's why it always tells you to have a Bible ready for your lesson. And it also gets the kids to... Okay, okay, now we're going to go into this particular, let's, let's say Ecclesiastes. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 4.10. So they got to find Ecclesiastes. They got to find the chapter and the verse. So it gets the child to learn how to find scripture in the word of God, how to find um, the reference of the Bible of scriptures. Okay, so that's what it looks like throughout. And then in the back, there are some like activity pages which the lesson would tell you if you need it. So they're like um, reproducibles. You would, I guess you could, um, it's not a perforated page. So you would either have to yank them out of the book or you can just um, copy them on your printer. Okay. And then that's for the book pulling together, which is this one. And now the treasure of the Pelican Cove goes along with this book. And BJU has a lot of these book links that go along with chapter books. They have a lot of them. I don't know how many they have per grade, but I know they have one, I think, for almost every grade. What well, you need to gather, what well, your student will learn, prepare a copy of Reproducible Lesson 6, and that would be in the back of the book, introduce the story, develop word meaning, which word means angrily or fiercely, furiously, which word means ran with swift, hurried movements, scuttled. So I guess you're talking about some vocabulary words there. Um, and then read pages 49 and 56. Scriptural application. Okay. Sometimes they'll have a connection to science as well. Or, or some other type of connection like thinking skills or grammar or science or math. Um, so it varies. And then right here, it'll have the reproducible pages. Okay.
Alrighty, I believe that was it. Oh yeah, and then this, there's the reading to assessments. I haven't opened this. I don't know what this has inside, but it says that it has uh, assessments. So I guess a test and answer keys. It has optional forms like individual anecdotal records, whatever that is. There's formative assessment check sheets, silent reading comprehension. So I guess that's for, that would be for you, the teacher, and then some tests for the students. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this flip through of the BJU Reading 2 for Grade 2. Um, if you really like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. I will be uploading pretty soon a video of our upcoming curriculum choices for the 2024 to 2025 school year um, and for second grade and fourth grade. So be on the lookout for those. Thank you and God bless.